Hey everybody, welcome back to the Potentially Dangerous Podcast. This is your host, Ross Barnachek, and joining me today is a special guest, Randy Pugh of the University of Northern Iowa. We had Randy on the program to talk a little bit about, you know, he spent the past two decades uh, as an athlete and coach for the Panthers. He's had a lot of success developing upper weights for the Panthers, most recently uh, NCAA national champion Drew Foster. And during his time, he's had, you know, a lot of, he's had a, he's got a unique perspective to see the trajectory of the program. He's been there to see the evolution of Drew Foster. So we kind of wanted to pick his brain on his time coming to UNI, Drew Foster, and kind of look forward to the UNI lineup. So hopefully you enjoy the program. Hey, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. From high school to international wrestling, on the mat and beyond, this is the Potentially Dangerous Podcast with the guys from IA Wrestle. If you're a fighter, you like a fight. If you're an American, you like a fight. If you're an Iowa Hawkeye, you know you're going to get a fight. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and all your podcast-friendly apps. And follow us on social media platforms at IA Wrestle. Time to strap it up and get to the show. Okay, and we should be live, so we're welcoming Randy Pugh to the podcast. This is your first appearance. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no problem. Kind of want to start out with a little bit of a, it's it's a recent, you know, event, but it's a little bit of a heavy, heavier topic. We know uh, one of your guys' athletes, Cade Lara from Fort Dodge. He's a local boy, so a lot of people know him. He's kind of going through something right now. It looks like he had his spleen taken out. So, and we know he's transferred to the University of Iowa. So, just kind of wanted to know if you could shed some light, give us an update on how he's doing, and you know where he's at in the recovery process in terms of that. Yeah. So, Kate had uh, obviously he had a couple surgeries actually. He had that, and then there were some other follow up things that he had to get done. So, he was down in Iowa doing that. And actually, I think it was just yesterday he got uh, he got to go home. So, I know he's he likes recovering at home a lot better than the hospital. So, we're glad to to hear that. You know, it seems like things got taken care of, but looking forward to recovery and getting back on campus here. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, everyone at, at IA Wrestle, when we saw that news and we saw all the, the social media talk about him, you know, he's definitely been in our thoughts and prayers over the last few few days, week, whatever you want to call it. And we're all hoping for a speedy recovery, so I think, appreciate the update on that. Um, so now, yeah, you bet. Now we can kind of switch gears, um, get into some more lighter stuff. I kind of wanted to talk to you because you're a guy that's got a lot of history at Northern Iowa where you're the assistant coach there, Doug Schwab, Lee Roper, Brett Robbins. So you've been at UNI for like over 20 years now, is that right, you know, total? Um, yeah, as an athlete coach. Yep. But really all that means is that, that just means I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I kind of want to talk. It's a little bit of a unique story, I, I think, um, for you to be, you know, a part of one program for so long. It's it's kind of a rarity to have that much sustained, you know, time at a program and, and still have, you know, you're obviously guys are having a lot of success. You know, so you were, you know, you're a local boy to begin with. You were state champion at Columbus Junction. Before we talk about what brought you back to the area, ori- originally you went to the Naval Academy, is that right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, two years out at uh, out in Annapolis. So, ba- take us back to that time, if you would, when you were coming out of high school. You know, what other schools were you looking at, and kind of what in, what went into your decision to go out to Navy in the first place? Then, you know, obviously, I had some some offers from different colleges. I actually got recruited by UNI to begin with, Missouri, Iowa, Paul, I'd say there was a lot of schools, but you know, I think Navy intrigued me a little bit just from a couple different. You know, much like it is a I'm bad I'm not recruiting against a lot of people. But uh, I don't know, you know, I thought I thought that uh it was a good opportunity for me and obviously went through the process of uh, getting recommendations from some senators and stuff and then got that part done and then decision game day and decision day day came and I was like you know, I felt good about it at the time. I felt really good about it. I've always said, you know, it was one of the best decisions I made to go there because I grew up a lot out there. Yeah, I had to come from a small town Iowa kid where I'm not used to the big city, you know. <laughs> right. That, that was, I mean, the first time I'd ever seen the ocean, pretty much. So went out there, and then I don't know that it was exactly what I expected. And I just thought that I would 
maybe enjoy it more. And then I think it was a great decision to go and a great decision to leave. So I'm happy with, with both choices, honestly. Then you 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 spend a couple of years out there, and I know they the those military schools have that that option that allow you to be released from your you know be released from the school to transfer back. Um, so you came back home. What what went into the decision to come back and then join you and I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I was looking around after I left, you know, and uh, Mark Manning had actually just taken over the program, so he got in touch with me and. And one of my old high school teammates, Jason Payne, he was coming here then too. You know, it was in '97, so I got a chance to, to talk to Manning and you know, hear his his uh, spiel about where he thought the program was going to go and kind of how he was going to build it. I had a lot of friends here, you know, and it was also a place that that I thought, you know what, I liked it when I was coming out of high school. Not much has changed. I mean, the coaching staff changed, but the school didn't change at So I decided to. Uh, this would be home for the next uh, next twenty some years, I guess. <laughs> right, and and you obviously had your own success coming back home, uh, earning All American honors for the Panthers back in two thousand, and then uh, after your career, obviously we've kind of already hit on it, but you you stayed at UNI. So can you take us through when you're finishing up your senior your senior year, you're graduated, and now you got to look at the real world. Uh, so what what led your what was the uh, series of events that led to you joining the staff? Yeah, well, actually, uh, it was that spring that after I graduated, he took the job in Nebraska. And so I had graduated from college. You know, I was looking at, at going to grad school, possibly getting into, uh, you know, looking at John Deere. And uh, Brad Penrith, who then he got the job at you and I, he called me and said, hey, I want you to get some staff. And I had not never really thought about it. And uh, I thought about it for a little bit and talked to him. And, I was happy with my college career. I don't think probably very many athletes are. I was going to I'm going to try to train for this much. So then that just made sense for me. You know, I could be working while training and, uh, you know, kind of train your crap all at once. So, yeah, I mean, that was that's pretty much in a nutshell. Like, I had an opportunity, and I think it's pretty rare, pretty rare for, uh, you know, there's not a lot of kids, I think, straight out of college that are able to, to get an assistant coaching job. I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot in those early years. I were able to have a lot of success, actually, in those early years. And then obviously, 2010, things changed, so I had to go through kind of really what I wanted to do again. So I want to keep coaching. Do I want to move on? You know, and then I was fortunate enough to Doug. I had some conversation with Doug and decided to, uh, to keep me around. And here we are today. <laughs> that, right. That, that's what's kind of really interesting that you, you – I was going to talk about, so your your head coach in college was Mark Manning. There's that turnover of the staff, and you get the opportunity to stay. Obviously, Penrith had, I mean, he had a, a fairly long stay. Uh, what was that, like seven, eight years? Is that right? Out of ten. ten yep. Okay. Ten years. So, ten years. That's right, 2000 to 2010. Uh, then Schwab comes. So you've kind of been there for for three different head coaches and so you've really seen you've seen a lot of the trajectory of the program so that's why it's really interesting so when when Penrith you know when they when the program makes a decision to switch to Schwab uh, what was that transition like and, and how did you make that decision to stay there uh, obviously you know Schwab had a say in it so what how does that how did that come to what you two come together to, to make that decision I guess well it was uh yeah I mean obviously when Brad got didn't get his contract renewed or whatever. As an assistant, you know, I don't know how it is other places, but here you're just on a year to year contract. So I did, but that was like in April, maybe, and uh, our contracts went through July. So then basically the old AD, Troy Tanner, was like, well, you can kind of use the next couple months as, uh, I guess, a tryout period for Doug. Well, that wasn't really the case, but that's how Troy was trying to sell it to us, I guess. But, uh, Anyway, when Doug came on his, his visit here, I got a hold of him afterwards and said, hey, man, I'd like to get a chance to talk with you about the program a little bit and kind of, you know, where I want to be involved. And uh, so we had some conversations because it needed to be, you know, it was a two-way street. It needed to be a fit for him, number one, but it needed to be a fit for me, too. And I've known his brother for a long time. I reached out to him time to time to talk about some mental stuff. So I had, uh, you know, a relationship with, with more, more than Doug probably, but... 
yeah, I was fortunate enough that the trick dug, I guess, into Fulham. And uh, <laughs> 10 years later, here we are. Well, well I think, uh, you know, I, th- I think it's a little bit selling. I, it's funny because to see how you and I have been successful at the upper weights, to say you kind of trick dug in, it's, it's kind of uh, comical because you guys have produced – I mean, quite a few All Americans at the upper weights. The most recent ones are Ryan Loader, Jerry Beats, uh, obviously Drew Foster. But I was just trying to think of uh, obviously guys you know still in that Doug Schwab era. You, you produced upper upper weight All Americans. Um, the Sean Stender, Kyle Hansen, and Eric Hahn. I know you you also worked with throughout your whole career. So uh, you know, do you? With you and I success at those upper weights, and with the most recent national champion, do you do you kind of take a lot of pride that that's something you're actively helping with the program? Then something you know you're helping continue. I don't know if pride is the right word, but I think that I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of good athletes come through and kids that really. I think we're coachable. We're really good teammates for the most part, and. uh you know, bought in, I think, to what we're, we're preaching to him. So, and none more than Drew. I mean, his story's pretty remarkable. I mean, the trajectory of his college career, being not a state champ, which is not a big deal. But even like his freshman year, he was 15, 18, or 16, 18, or something. And then the next year, the all Americans, you know. And that really, that summer, he had a really good summer. And where he was like, he was pretty uber focused. And he didn't work out a ton. But when he did, man, he was super efficient. And, uh, he, he listened really well, and he finally grew into his body, which was a huge part of his success. You know, that's just dumb luck, really. He was able to, to ultimately win the title this year, which is, is crazy fear. It was like seven scoops last year that national chance. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. And I, I know you've you've talked about this a lot since Drew's success. I you know I've watched your interviews and read read what you've had to say on it. And I, I know I get what you're saying that the the state never won a state title is not really a big deal. It's what you do you know the work you put in obviously. But winning those state titles and all that high school level success tends to get you noticed. So since Drew really didn't have those national titles those. You know, or you know the state title, whatever you want to call it, in high school. What was it that drew your attention to him in the first place, and and how did the how did you recruit him then? If you know, since he didn't have it, all that success, you obviously saw potential. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing you look for is the character of a kid, and that he's an unbelievable kid. I mean, his parents have been there a lot, have they? That dude, man, he's a really he's very humble, which uh, I really appreciate. And he works hard, and honestly, I mean. I was recruiting one of his teammates, Adam Drain. So I was recruiting Drain, and then a kid that, Jason Payne, who was a former All-American here at UNI, he's actually a high school teammate of mine, too. He's like, hey, check out this foster kid. And I was like, okay, you know. And then I watched him, and he made the finals. He actually lost to Jacob Holstein at the finals at 160 pounds. <laughs> They've both grown a little bit since then. A little bit. So I watched him. I was like, you know what? He does got potential because he hasn't grown into his body yet was the big thing. He's got a frame. We were kind of looking for a guy in 65, 74, 84 weight. You know, we needed some, I don't want to say depth, but we needed another guy in there. You know, luckily for us, Drew listened to Jason Payne and not his mom. Only time I'll ever say that. <laughs> but, because uh, he was looking at, you know, some smaller schools, and, and I think Northern Illinois was in the picture, so but I think he got a little about the family environment here and just, you know, the potential. Then he, he comes into you and I, and you've talked about it, that he had to grow into his body. Obviously, he makes a, a big jump from 65 to 84 to when he finally finds his footing. Uh, he didn't have a very successful start. to uh, He had a losing record his first year, right? His first year. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, I mean, for from a mentality standpoint, did he ever have anything he went through that you guys kind of had to, like, make sure he was – he knew that – you you guys knew that he, you could get him where he needed to go, or I mean, how did how did you manage him in those first few years when he's kind of going through his rough patch before he finally hits a stride? Well, honestly, from the beginning, man, that's what really uh, that's what really I think because I always told that I was like, this dude's going to be good, and my whole basis was that was wrestling wasn't too big for him, you know, it was just part of life. It wasn't his entire life. Like he could handle losing. It didn't eat him up. He didn't get entirely put a ton of pressure on himself, get really nervous before matches, you know. And I think 
even like when he was losing a lot of those matches his freshman year, it was more of I think him growing into his body because he was wrestling he was wrestling seventy four eighty four that year. I think seventy four. He was bound maybe with Kyle Lush and then he bumped up when uh, Cody Caldwell got hurt, I think. And so he was undersized for the weight. I mean he was he didn't weigh, you know. So we could kind of keep it positive for that, but he was always positive and just understood that it was part of the process. You know, my whole thing was, hey, man, our goal's in March. Let's get the best we can be for there. And I really, really, it's a lot of my heart, but he's going to make the national tournament that year. And he got rode out, I think, double overtime or something to lose in the wrestleback match to go to the national tournament. And so I think it was after the tournament. I was like, next year you're going to, you're not even going to call for nationals. You're going to do some serious games this year. And, uh, you know, my crystal ball was at work that year because the next year, obviously, he plays yeah, did you buy a lottery ticket? Yeah, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. I should have. But, you know, really, him man, it's just he was able to express the fun and not feel the way of the world. And I think that's why he was able to have a lot of success that he did. From, yeah, from my outside perspective, he always kind of seems like he's kind of, he's, he's a little bit of a different breed of, of human being where, He's just, he's got a little bit of something extra, whether it be, you know, like that mental, some guys can just switch it on. Um, you know, some guys can just, they're, they're just, they got the mean mentality and some guys can just wrestle cool, calm and collected. You know, there's, there's different mindsets that make you successful. And I think Drew's just got, there's not very many people that have his certain mindset that, you know, he can go out there and wrestle a guy that like. You know, Dean, that's beaten him a couple times, and, you know, he still goes out there and is able to score, and and it just, I mean, it's a, it's a phenomenal story. We've, we've, everybody's talked about it just because how great it is. Um, it has has his success then kind of been something you guys have now been able to, to plug to the rest of the team to show that hard work and buying into the right mindset can, you know, obviously can pay huge dividends? Is that something you're kind of selling to the rest of the guys now? Yeah, I don't know that we had to sell it that hard, you know. I mean, I think just guys being in the room and seeing how he trained and obviously it's important to have, you know, Doug talks about the tip of the sword a lot, being the first guy through. And now that first guy's through, you hope that, you know, that the floodgates open. I'm not saying we're going to have 10 national champs this year. No, I'm not, not saying we're not going to either. <laughs> That's right. The, the, everyone, uh, everyone starts the season undefeated, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and really, it doesn't matter if you're undefeated or you got 10, 15 losses in the national time. It's going to be who's the best over those three days. That's really all it is. There's another guy I wanted to talk about because he was absent last year, and that was Jacob Holschlag. He's hurt. He's finally back. You know, how hard was it for you guys to deal with the lineup? I don't know if it was made public when he wasn't going to be, you know, wrestling the season, how far in advance you guys knew. How did you kind of cope with losing? A guy that's an all-American candidate in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of the sport, right? I mean, we're not the only team that it happens to, so it's, it's nice. He's going to hurt our team as a whole, probably, just because, you know, you got a guy that's a pretty good example for guys. And he gives I mean, him and Drew and Lou Hot, you know, those guys in a group of three are completely three different styles. And uh, I think it probably hurt those guys a little bit just from having a great workout partner that, kind of sharpen your skills up, but once the decision is made, you know, I think the NCAA and how they kind of changed the rules a little bit made that decision a little bit easier for us and him because you could either wrestle the whole year, you know. In the old days, you wouldn't have got that year back. Basically, you had to miss two years before you got one year back. They changed the, just the wording of it so that now basically a retro year counts for missed opportunity, I guess. And, uh, so if you miss one year, you're going to get that year back. So I think knowing that, it was like, well, we can have a healthy ticket full flag for two more years, or we can have you know, a ticket full flag for the ACL for this year, and then a healthy one next year. And it just made sense. You know? I think he became a lot better wrestler, you know, being able to watch. It kind of it kept him very close. And him and Rolf were pretty close to each other. You know, so they did a lot of things to, uh, I think, help his wrestling while being injured. Because there's a lot of ways to get better at wrestling, just not on the 
I think, having him around in the fall. Really, man, he, he tried to be the best we have or ever, you know. So just find a way that they can compete while he's not competing. I think it was, it was important for him, too. But he got a lot bigger, I'll tell you that. Man, 420 pounds here not too long ago. So he's finally a full-size 97 pounder. Because that, that year, not last year, but the year before, he was only weighing in. Like, I think he weighed 97 pounds. Right, wasn't he wrestling so, 74 the year before he went up to 97? Yeah, 74, then he wrestled 97. Him and Drew were actually battling for the 84 spot. Foster kind of took that over after the scuffle, and then uh, actually Jared Bartow got hurt, so the whole was able to get the lineup. He qualified for the national tournament at 97 that year, and then he was still small last year, but he was, or two years ago, I guess. And last year he was closer, and now he's a full-size 97 pounder now, so. We're excited. We're glad to have him back and healthy. Looking forward to him getting out there and do some damage. Another thing that's really apparent with your guys' lineup is the number of Iowa guys throughout the roster and in the starting lineup. I imagine you know you guys targeting all those Iowa guys is a pretty intentional recruiting strategy. Is that safe to say? Well, I think uh, the state of Iowa has incredible kids. Wrestling is important in the state of Iowa. It is. We love Iowa kids. It would take all new kids. I just think there's something about Iowa kids, you know. We've had success with them. Other places have too, but yeah, we love our Iowa kids here. Yeah, and obviously you guys do have uh, other pipelines out there, uh, Georgia, other states you pull from, but um, it does seem that there's there's a lot more Iowa flavor to the lineup, and it seems like Doug's made a, quite a few comments that you know they. You, you enjoy building your team based on the home state, and you talk about how good the state of Iowa is. I don't think you have to look any farther than uh, this past Fargo. I, I can't remember. I mean, the junior team was in the top five for both styles. I can't remember where the cadet team was, but they cadet team still had success too. So obviously I think Iowa is kind of resurging in, in terms of, you know, those national finishes on the high school level too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, are you okay running through the lineup? Would that be something you could do with us? Kind of uh, yeah. Looking at some potential. I don't really know who's going to be at a lot of weights yet, but right. That that's <laughs> that kind of you guys return quite a few starters, uh, but there seems like you also have a ton of guys coming off of red shirt. That a twenty eighteen class was something in Iowa again. Going back to that was something we were pretty high on, and a lot of those guys are coming off red shirt. So just starting at 125, one of those guys is Kyle Biscaglia. I know you have that established starter in Jay Schwarm, but will we see a battle between those two? Is that is there anybody else at 125 we should be watching for, or is it just those two? Uh, I think those guys are they've done a really good job of putting themselves in a position to be the guy. You know, we've got uh, Jay Skipper's in there too. He filled in for us last year a little bit at 33. Uh, that's what hurt, but uh, yeah, I mean it'll be be interesting. I don't want to say wrestle off because we try to move as much as possible, but just seeing how those guys are able to break out and wrestle, there's going to be some big tournaments where we have to fit into. And uh, maybe early season tournament here, we're trying to set our lineup that, that way where we're going to have to beat each other in competition, you know, and then prove that they can beat other guys too. That's right. So I think that, that, that'll that take care of itself most of the time it does. One guy just grabs a hold of his spot. Yeah, both those guys are 25, 33. Our starter from last year's back, Jackson Kavarzi. Uh, Drew Bennett will be, will be in there. He's, been, he's dinged up a little bit right now. But uh, he, had, he had surgery last year, so he didn't wrestle a ton. I think both, both those guys will be, you know, battling for the spot, too. 41. Um, so we lost we lost Albert. And we got Michael Block is coming to be in there. Excited to see him. He had a really good business last year. Had a good good year, and he's grown a lot this summer. I think, you know, just mentally and, and knowing that he can do it, be the guy. And I'm really excited to see him hit the match around here. Uh, 49, be Max Thompson. I'm not sure to see here. Hopefully, he's, I think he's figured some out, some things out, you know, and uh, him and Doug have been putting a ton of work on. Two different positions that are really bothering him, I guess, and he can lose, you know, in big matches. And, I mean, Max has been right there. You know, he's been one of the best guys in the country since his freshman year. He plays the freshman in his round 12 the last two years. 
it was just heartbreaker there. Was was he in the NCAA semifinals as a freshman? Is that right? Or yep. that's what I thought. Yep. I mean, he was a he's a win away from going to the finals, right? So we, he's yeah. always been right there. Yeah. So he's excited. I know. You know, he's got one last run in him here. And, you know, a great ambassador for for you and I, and just how he lives his life and takes care of business. You know, he's an academic all American multiple times. If you ever heard the guy talk to man, he's he's a really really articulate. He's a really good ambassador for the sport of wrestling and you. Uh, 57, uh, Peyton Moore. You know, he's a senior. He started for us in the past. I think he'll be he'll be in there. And then we got a couple other guys, Keaton Dirge, uh, Derek Holschlag. You know, both those guys are putting their time in and really trying to make a run at that spot, too, I think. 74, well, I don't really know yet. Got got some question marks there. Uh Yant, Austin Yant from Wrigley Show Rocks, but he's done, he had a really, really impressive summer. He's put on a lot of size. He's uh, worked on a lot of skill work, and uh, he's looked pretty good recently. Uh, I think Isaiah Patton's looking there. Maybe Keegan Moore, you know, potentially dropped down to 74. Um, battle for that spot. Luan's going up to 84 this year. I guess that was a good transition. Luan will be at 84. 97 will probably be Holschlag. And we're the Carter Isley. And then I think you, uh, it's probably because I interrupted you there at 49, but I think we skipped over 65, but obviously Bryce Steyer will be back. Uh, he finally made the podium yep. last year. You guys are probably pretty excited about him too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bryce had a, he had a good year last year, you know, and he's been, he's been addressing any positions that, that he struggled with. And uh, so I'm excited to see him out there this year. It's a big, a big year, I think, for you and I wrestling. we got, really good senior class. Obviously, a lot of momentum to build off of. So we'll have a great home schedule this year that people will be able to come up and see us against some really, really good teams. You guys are also wrestling Oklahoma State in the McLeod Center. I just saw that was kind of recent news announced, right? Yep, yep. What's the decision to wrestle in the McLeod versus the West Gym, do you know? Honestly, I think, I mean, the hopes is, right, that that we're going to have a really good team and they're going to have a really good team and uh, it'll be a big time duel. So it's, it's, we try and wrestle over there. You know, we wrestled Oklahoma over there a couple of years ago, every so often. And like the date fit with basketball schedules and everything else. So, I mean, it made sense. And hopefully we can fill that thing up, get, you know, 6,000 plus people in there and have a rude welcome for the Cowboys. That's right. Well, you, I mean, you kind of, um, I think you you answered a lot of the questions I had for the for the lineup. Um, you talked about you guys have an incredible home schedule. I think you know we're all pretty excited about it. I know Nick is because Nick loves driving on up and uh, covering you guys for us. So um, I'm trying to think who's the other. Who's yeah, man, the, we gotta get, you got Nebraska coming. We gotta get in, you right? and Hanger up here to a duel. What was that? We gotta get you and Hanger up here to a duel. I know it. Last year, I was terrible. I think I only went and covered one event. Uh, I just had a, a newborn this last year, so I was kind of uh, out of commission in terms of finding finding my rhythm. So now that I'm back into yeah, the yeah. swing of things, I'm I'm excited to kind of be back on the road this summer or this winter, I guess. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, it starts off with Nebraska. Is that what, is that what kind of what you're saying? I interrupt you a little bit there. Yeah, that's that's the big kickoff duel, right? Yeah. So yeah, well, we've been, uh, been trying to get him on for the schedule for a while now. And, and, uh, you know, it happened to work out. We went over there last year. And then they're coming back here this year. I don't know if we'll continue it or not, but, yeah, we're excited about it. Just having a big 10 team, another big 10 team on the schedule. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of history there, obviously, with Manning coaching here for a while. So I was just going to say. Good to get him back. It's kind of like a full circle thing talking in the beginning about, you know, you, you wrestling for Manning and, and now, you know, here, here we are toward the end just talking about him coming back. So, yeah, uh, for sure. It, it, you guys got quite a few Big Ten teams on the, the schedule. You're obviously pretty excited about wrestling Wisconsin too, right? Yep. Yeah, Wisconsin, uh, Northwestern. We'd like to have a few more, but, you know, there's a lot of reasons for people here. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, Wisconsin will be a good one. I mean, I think we got we got a four year deal with them, so we'll be home and away for the next four years. So they'll come here next year, and we'll go back there in two years, and they'll come back again. Uh, same thing with Northwestern. So it's nice for us to have, you know, it planned out a little bit in the future where 
okay, we're going to have these teams. I'd like to do that with a lot of teams. You know, I think it just makes scheduling a lot easier for us. But it's wrestling, I don't know if they're a little bit behind the eight ball, you know, in that aspect or what, but we're trying to change that a little bit. So. Yeah, that, that kind of seemed like it was pretty big big news when you guys announced how long the the series was going to be and uh you, you mentioned that you and i and wisconsin kind of have that history of, of wrestling each other and it probably i imagine it helped having bono at wisconsin because i felt like before the the big 12 brought in you know those the uh, western conference western regional teams you guys were dueling south dakota state you know non-conference for, I mean, you guys just kind of had that relationship for a while there. So seeing Bono go to Wisconsin, that was one thing I was looking forward to is maybe seeing that that series between Doug and and Chris kind of extend a little bit. For sure, they, those guys got a lot of history. So, right. so I mean, it, it makes sense too, right? It's, it's only three hours from here for them and for us. So, big time. I think you know, we don't have to travel for it to be the competition. What do the next couple of weeks look like for you as a coach? There's a couple of weeks before practice starts up. Uh, I know it's a pretty heavy time of year for recruiting. Um, I mean, are you get, are you like out there on the road recruiting, trying to get everything, get some visits in before the you know it's time to really go to work every day officially? Yeah, I mean that's uh, I don't know the wrestling ever stops. It just slows down at times. You know, the recruiting never stops. So we're gonna we're gonna do a couple home visits here in the next couple of weeks, and I know either me or Doug's plan on going to the there's a big camp in Wisconsin. Uh, Coach Roper's gonna go out to journeyman. There's a big tournament out there next weekend, the first weekend of October. Uh, we have a big homecoming event here. We have an open practice and stuff. So we'll kind of be busy organizing stuff for that. And then after that, you know, Super 32 and practice is officially started by then. So yeah, it'll be a lot of recruiting. We still have some RTC practices and stuff, but. Between that, trying to watch all my girls' soccer and softball games, that'll be busy. It's, it's yeah, it's always busy for a college coach. It seems like you know, you know, there's always you say it slows down, but sometimes I don't know if it really feels like that for you guys. But I know from a fan perspective, I love it when it's football season because that means the the wrestling lull period is really over. I mean, there's world championships. The recruiting does pick up with official visits. Um, so there's at least a little something to talk about. Schedules start getting released in late summer, and that's when things are, you know, as a as a fan, we can kind of really get the juices flowing. So um, we're definitely looking forward to this UNI team. You guys got a lot of talent coming back. Hopefully maybe some new names will emerge. We'll see. And you, like we've already talked about, you guys got an amazing schedule, and we're really looking forward to it. So we appreciate you taking the time to join us today, Randy. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.